Hello painters, it's Diane McNaughton here. Welcome to my watercolour painting channel. In this video I'm going to look at triadic colours. Now the triadic colour scheme sounds complicated but it's not. It's one that I use mostly. It's using colours that are equidistant away from each other on the colour wheel. So if you make a little triangle like this, blue, red and yellow is the one that I use very often. Or you could do one that is violet, orange and green or even uh, red violet, yellow orange and blue green. Now I'm going to use the one that I like is the red, yellow and blue combination. So I'll be using Oriolan, um, French Ultramarine and Alizarin Crimson this time. And I'm going to be using my lovely Da Vinci brushes. Uh, these are mop, squirrel mops number one and three. I've decided to paint this tiny bunch of grapes otherwise we might be here all afternoon. My grapes are positioned with the light behind them so they are creating an almost like a silhouette and I want to keep the area light behind them so I'm going to leave that part of the paper white and unpainted. I'm using my Oriolan and Elizabeth and Crimson and I'm painting the grapes and the stalks all in one shape also the shadow underneath leaving the various highlights that are on some of the grapes. And I'm using this color combination to represent the color of the grapes where the light shines through them. I am careful to leave the little cracks of light between the grapes. Here and there, I add a little bit more alizarin crimson to the wet wash and also a little bit more of the pure areolin so that the wash doesn't look completely flat. Being mindful that the shadows cast by the grapes is part of the shape, I soften the edges of some of the grapes to allow the colour to drift down. I'm now going to add some of the French ultramarine to the shadow areas to cool these areas. My wash is still damp over most of the uh, paper so I can just add a little bit more colour to some of those um, grapes, add a little bit of more red there to give them more depth and I think I'm now going to let this dry as my first layer. So the paint is dry here and I now want to build up a shape of the grapes uh, by adding French ultramarine and alizarin crimson to make a violet colour with a darker area at the base of the grapes. In order to create a three-dimensional look, some of the grapes, I want them to be cool in temperature and so more bluer and then they look further away and some will be warmer and so appear to come forward so they'll have a more red colour. I soften each edge um, I want some of that wash to come through so I've got to be careful and then I'm softening underneath the grapes that uh, lie against the shadow because there's no hard lines between the grape and the shadow there. When the stalk appears in front of a grape, it looks much lighter in tone, but when it has the light behind it, it really looks darker, so keep that in mind when you're painting. I paint around the stalk with using the negative painting technique. The wash on most of the grapes now is still damp, wet, so what I love to do is drop in some Oriolan into that and just warm up some of those grapes. Oriolan mixes so beautifully with that red and blue. Thank you. 
my second layer is now dry and I'm looking at it and it's looking a bit wishy-washy so I really need to build up more darker areas for contrast. So again I use the blue and the red to build up the darker areas um, and I see some sort of there's a little dark grape between those two front grapes so I need to establish that. I, I tend to do quite a lot of layers and I, I love the transparency of watercolour because uh, a bit of each layer can shine through and it gives it a lovely multi-dimensional look. I often lift my board to mix some of my paint on the paper because when I put my brush in it actually sucks up some of the, the pigment so I'd rather move it around by gravity. There we go again soften that edge at the top. Now I'm really getting some darks going here. Of course as soon as I soften underneath some of the pigment drips down so I've got to keep um, that in mind and add some more dark paint to it. I want that grape at the top to be in, uh, darker than the grape behind but I still need to establish the tone of the grape behind. Let's hope that this, is, this layer will do it for the grapes. Let me get that little grape. There's a lovely little dark grape behind there. And then there's a nice shape behind these two grapes with using negative painting to make the grape stand out. Go. And I need a little bit of dark there, but I don't want it as dark as that grape above it. Adding a little bit more aureolin to the wash and hopefully it'll sort itself out there. Now this grape is in front of the little grape behind and I want to establish that shape. I keep in mind and soften edges as I go. Now I bring the colour over to the left because the grapes are in the middle of the picture and I want to connect to the edge of the painting so that the eye comes into the painting and soften some of the edges up the top there. I need to establish this bottom grape with strong colour because it's right in the front. But I don't want it to get muddy because the, when you mix the three colours you can get mud. I do apologise the light for this um, segment. I forgot to turn off the overhead light and so you're getting a bit of a peculiar shadow there. Never mind. I'm now coming in with some of the dark on my stalks. Adding, I'm, I'm making the, uh, using blue and yellow to make a green, but I always add reds to my greens, otherwise they, be, they just stand out and they don't look right. And there's quite a lot of red in those stalks. So I'm adding the paint to them and then I'll see how, I don't want them to stand out too much, except for those ones that are in silhouette. My shadow areas need a, need a little bit more blue to cool them down, so I'm adding a little wash of the French Ultramarine over those pinky shadows that I've already got. That's it. Soften them here and there, so I don't have hard lines everywhere, but it just gives a nice contrast to the rest of the painting. And I think that's just about done. Actually, I think that uh, central grape might need a little bit more colour because the one that's coming forward. So I'm going to add a little bit more colour to it. A bit more red and aureolin, just to warm it up so that it comes forward. And then just soften the edge there so that the colour drips into the shadow and doesn't create a hard crinkly edge where I don't want it. And I think that's about it. 
Here is my finished painting representing a little bunch of grapes. I do hope you've enjoyed watching.